Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about a simple and very powerful machine learning algorithm, k-nearest neighbors. k-nearest neighbors algorithm is commonly used in practice and is also commonly asked in interviews for data scientists and machine learning engineers. So no matter whether you want to expand your technical knowledge or you are preparing for an interview, it's worth learning about it. In this video, I will first give you an overview of the algorithm and how it works. Then we will dive into the implementation of k-nearest neighbors. Finally, I will explain to you how to use cross-validation to select the optimal k. Let's get started. The philosophy of k-nearest neighbors can be summarized in one sentence. You are determined by your closest neighbors. As I mentioned before, it's simple and powerful. It's simple because it does not need to learn any parameters to make predictions. This is different from models that need to learn parameters, such as linear regression and logistic regression. That's also why KN is a kind of non-parametric model. It's powerful because it can be used in both regression and classification tasks. Depending on what task you want to do, you only need to tweak the output of the algorithm to get what you want. Now, let's look at how it works. To make a prediction of a new data point, we first need to find its k closest neighbors from the dataset. To find which data points are the closest neighbors, we need to measure the distance between the new data point and all existing data points. Common distance metrics include Euclidean distance and cosine similarity. Then, we could use the closest neighbors to predict the outcome. If it's a regression task, we'll take the average of all its closest neighbors' values, and that will be the prediction. If it's a classification task, the prediction will be the majority of the class of its neighbors. And that's it. That's how we can use KN to predict the outcome of a new data point. Because of its simplicity and powerfulness, KN is so commonly used. Sometimes you may not realize you are using it. For example, if you are looking for a new apartment and you want to know if the rent of an apartment you are interested in is reasonable or not, what do you do? You look at the rental prices of similar apartments in the same area. Similar in the sense that they have same size, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, and amenities. Then you use the average rent of those apartments to infer if the apartment you are interested in is priced reasonably or not. What you have done is exactly a k-nearest neighbors algorithm. Now you know how KN works. Let's dive into the implementation. In this video, we will focus on a naive implementation, which might be good enough in interviews. But sometimes the interviewer may ask you to further improve it to make it more efficient. If you want to learn about a more optimized solution, stay tuned. I will talk about it in another video. But the naive approach is still useful because the structure is the same as the optimized version. So let's take a look at it together. To implement KN, there are only two simple steps obtaining the data and querying the nearest neighbors for prediction. I mentioned earlier that KN is a non parametric model and its training and prediction are different from parametric models, which involve using a training process to get the values of parameters and then use those parameters to make predictions. For KN, the data is shared between training and prediction. It makes sense to package our implementation in a class so that functions in that class could share variables. In this class object, we only have three functions the init function, the train function, and the predict function. In Python, it's a good coding practice to declare all instance variables in the init function before using them or updating the values. Other people reading your code could easily understand what variables will be used and shared in that class. So we declare self.x and self.y representing the training data and labels respectively and assign none to them in the init function. Next, let's look at the train function. It's pretty straightforward. We just store the training data x and y into self.x and self.y, so that can be used by the predict function. Moving forward to the predict function, this is the core of the algorithm. For the function input, we have a new data point that we want to predict values for and we have k to define the number of neighbors to query. 
Here, I also want to mention the dimension of the data. We assume x is a two-dimensional array with the first dimension being the number of data points, and the second dimension is the number of features. For regression problems, the labels y is an array of floating numbers, and for classification problems, it's an array of integers, each represents a class. To find the k closest neighbors, the idea is to first get the distance from the new data point to all the training data points and sort them in ascending order based on the distance. Then we just need to select the top k. Here we use tuples to store the distance and the observed label y so that we could easily sort a list of tuples in ascending order based on the distance. And we use the built-in sorted function in Python to do the sorting. To get the label for the new data point, if it's a regression problem, we can simply take the mean of the labels from all k neighbors. If it's a classification problem, we can count the majority of labels from its neighbors. To make it simple, we use the count class to generate a dictionary of counts with keys being the labels and values being the count. Then we use the most common function of counter to return the highest voted label. We have just completed the implementation of KN to do both classification and regression. It's much simpler than a few other algorithms, right? Now let's take a look at its time and space complexity. In the trend function, we simply create two variables x and y and point them to the input data. So both the space and time complexity are O1. In the predict function, constructing an array of distance label pairs have a complexity of O M N, with M being the number of data points and N being the number of features, as we need to go through all the data points and compute the distance using all features. The most time consuming part comes in the sorting, which gives O M log M. This is the complexity of Python's built in sorting algorithm. So the total time complexity is O M N plus O M log M. Assuming log M is larger than N, because typically the number of training data points is much more than the number of features. So the overall complexity can be reduced to O M log M. When we need to make a lot of predictions using huge amount of training data points, looking for nearest neighbors can become a bottleneck. For space complexity, we need OM to store the distance label pairs. The Python built-in sorted function uses O log M space. So the overall space complexity is OM. You have just learned the implementation of KN as well as its time and space complexity. Finally, let's take a look at an interesting question which may appear as a follow-up question in interviews, and that is how to find the optimal K. Similar to the K-means algorithm, k in k nearest neighbors is a hyperparameter that is predetermined by the user. When you use the algorithm for prediction, you could use any positive number that you think makes the most sense. So it's kind of arbitrary. When k is too small, predictions can be noisy, so we rarely set it as 1. But when k is too large, the prediction is averaged over too many data points, the result is not accurate either. So how do we determine the optimal k? One simple approach, as you may find in many articles, is to use the square root of the total number of data points. Say you have 400 data points, k would be 20. This is an empirical value, you could use it for quick experiments. But for a more rigorous approach, we can use cross-validation to select the optimal k for each specific dataset. The goal of cross-validation is to use training data to help us test the choices of hyperparameters in machine learning models. To do that, we shuffle the training data and divide it into n equal-sized partitions. Then, we pick a range of values we want to select from for the hyperparameter. For each candidate, we use n-1 partitions for training and the remaining 1 partition for validation. We compute the validation error associated with each candidate, and then we select the one with the minimum error. That's how we can get the optimal value of k. We could also take a more robust approach by repeating this exercise on different partitions. 
meaning every partition has a chance to be a validation dataset. So at the end of the process, we have n validation errors associated with each candidate. The average of those errors becomes the course validation error of that candidate. Finally, we just need to pick the candidate with the lowest cross validation error. All right, guys, you have just learned what is KN, how to implement it, and how to select the optimal K. Now you have another machine learning algorithm in your toolbox to do both regression and classification. If you like this video or you have learned something new in this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying my best to create the contents to help you land your dream data science jobs. As always guys, I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this video. I will see you soon.